Hi, it is great to see you. Um, it's January and it is the height of the viral illness season here in the United States. Mm -hmm. And we have been getting tons of questions from our friends and families and followers. Um, kind of about what to do about their sick kiddos. Um, some from COVID and some from other viral illnesses. Yep. So with that, we're gonna dive into how do you take care of a sick baby? What are some things you should expect? When do you treat a fever? How do you help their ba bodies best fight off whatever virus they have? Mm -hmm. um, and then also some of those red flag signs and symptoms, reasons to call the pediatrician right away. In case this is your first time meeting us, I'm Kurt, I'm a board certified pediatrician. I'm Sarah, I'm a board certified OBGYN. And, and we, we are, are the, the Dr. Bjorkman. We need to start out this week by letting you know that at some point in time, your baby is going to get sick and that's okay. Um, it's a natural part of life and they're strong little kiddos that will get better. Yeah, and so there are definitely some things you can do to limit the risk of your baby getting sick. These are like frequent hand washing for you or anyone who's gonna hold baby, okay. staying away from people who are sick, trying to make sure that your nutrition and baby's nutrition are as good as possible, and then keeping up with normal routine childhood vaccinations. Yes. No matter what though, at some point, your little baby is gonna come into contact with a virus and it will get them sick. And this doesn't make you a bad parent, mm -hmm. um, it just happens. Um, this week, little Cease had her first febrile illness and it was not a fun time, we'll talk about that. Yeah, and so this week we're going to share some of those emotions that we felt as parents with a sick baby, but then also the things that I as a pediatrician want my patient's parents to know mm -hmm. about how to help their babies get as better as fast as possible. And also, again, at the end, we're gonna go through all the red flags, signs and symptoms to say, hey, you need to call a pediatrician or bring your baby to the emergency department right away. You have taken care of lots of sick kiddos over the years. What are things that parents should expect when their baby gets sick? Yeah, so as we all know, being sick is no fun. And just how you feel kind of run down. You can imagine your baby feels that same way, kind of more tired, not wanting to eat as much, mm -hmm. uh, maybe wanting to sleep more, and maybe just wanting to be cuddled a bit more too. Mm -hmm. um, but with it, there's most certainly a difference between being sick with a cold and being truly ill. Yeah. So it's important right here to say that you as a parent know your baby better than anyone else. Mm -hmm. So if at any point you're saying something is seriously wrong, my baby's missed multiple feeds in a row, they're not doing their normal thing, they're not responsive, and you feel like something's really wrong, you need to call their doctor right away. Yeah, and then another thing we need to mention is that if your baby is in the first two months of life and they have a fever, this is also a reason to contact their medical provider right away. Especially in the first month of life, babies are at higher risk of serious bacterial illnesses that could be potentially life-threatening if not treated soon enough. So if you have a young baby in the first one to two months of life and they have a fever, call their doctor. Okay, so since you mentioned it, what about fevers? Are they dangerous? Do you need to treat them? Yeah, so those are all great questions. So first off, the fever itself is rarely dangerous. It's part of the body's natural response in fighting infection. Okay. Um, but having said that, fevers can kind of speed up that dehydration process. It often makes you feel extra crummy, less likely one to eat or drink, um, and can be associated with some pretty heavy breathing. Mm -hmm. uh, so if your baby is has a fever but is otherwise happy, eating well, drinking well, no troubles breathing, you don't have to treat that fever. Um, but if they're having any of those other signs and symptoms, that'd be enough to say, oh, why don't you treat it? You can help them feel a little bit better, making sure they're going to stay hydrated through that fever. Okay, but how high does the fever need to be? Yeah, so um, a technical true fever um, is a core body temperature of 38 degrees Celsius or higher, which is 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. um, the best place to take a temperature in a baby, the most accurate, is technically rectally. Um, you can also take it in the mouth, which is also very accurate. If you've got like a forehead scanner or a thermometer that works under the armpit, those are okay to use too. They just aren't quite as accurate for getting a true core body temperature. So when we're talking about treating a fever, the first things that you can do are to make sure their room isn't too warm mm -hmm. or that they're not over bundled. If 
those things are fine, then it's okay to think about using medications. Yeah, and the number one medication recommended for treating a fever in infants is Tylenol. This is also called acetaminophen or paracetamol. Mm -hmm. um, and this is great for infants in treating those fevers. Uh, there's weight dosing that should be on the box, so you can always talk to their medical provider about how much to give. Yeah. Um, it's really important to note that medications like ibuprofen or Motrin should not be used for fever if your baby is in the first six months of life, as those medications can be tough on their young developing kidneys. Every viral illness is a little bit different, but in general, oftentimes you're seeing symptoms for about a week with the peak of symptoms usually around day five of illness. Yeah, I kind of like to think of it with a cold or virus that it's three days coming, three days staying, and three days going. Yeah. Um, and that also mentally helps me when I'm sick. All right, you mentioned helping the baby's body fight off infection. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? Yeah, and so for most viral illnesses, though, it kind of two key things are easy breathing and adequate hydration. Now, controlling the fevers that we talked about can, can help with both of these, but there's some other important things to think about for easy breathing and adequate hydration. When it comes to hydration, the best thing you can do is to keep giving your baby fluids and that the best form is going to be breast milk or formula. Yeah, and so it's okay if your baby doesn't want to eat as much when they're sick, just like you don't want to eat as much when you're sick. The key thing here is fluid. So if your baby has already started eating solids, you may notice that when they're sick, they don't want solids at all. That's okay. The key here is hydration and fluids in. Um, if they don't want to take as much volume at once, that's okay. Offering them foods more frequently throughout the day to help them get kind of still that total volume throughout the day is going to be what's key to help them getting the hydration they need. Yeah. Um, and here's one of those times when it's kind of neat uh, to be breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. um, mom's body can actually sense um, the virus that baby has from the saliva and then proceeds to make antibodies to fight that virus. Um, and it's also likely mom may have the same bug as well. And so you are making antibodies that you are then passing to baby through the breast milk to help them fight that infection. Of course, it is totally fine if you're formula feeding. Um, this is just one of those benefits um, or neat perks of breastfeeding. And so when it comes to knowing is your baby getting enough, you can know your baby is getting enough fluid in by how much pee they're making. Um, so you may notice that when they're sick, their diapers aren't quite as heavy or they aren't peeing quite as often, but they're peeing enough generally if they're making a wet diaper at least every eight to 10 hours. If you're starting to notice that it's getting that long or longer between peeing, um, that's a reason to call your pediatrician. Is there any time when you would use other fluids yeah, so as we mentioned, the best fluids for a baby is gonna be formula or breast milk. If you're getting to the point where they're refusing these fluids and not taking fluids in, it's a good time to be talking to your baby's pediatrician. Um, there are times where you could think about using Pedialyte or watered down juices, um, but do generally recommend not giving just pure water to young infants less than six months of age, as again, sometimes their young developing kidneys have pr trouble processing water without the other electrolytes in it. So we've talked about the hydration part. What about the easy breathing part? Yeah, so every virus is a little bit different in how it affects the airways of a young baby. Mm -hmm. um, but some key things, if your baby is having just difficulty breathing or they're having really noisy breathing in or breathing out, call their doctor. Again, this is a good time to say, if you are concerned, just call. It is much better to check in with your baby's doctor too frequently than not checking in and you being really nervous or not sure what to do at home with a sick baby. Yeah, some other things you may notice kind of when your baby has a viral illness is that they may just have a little bit of increased work of breathing and some of that is expected. You may see a little bit of their nose flaring a little bit more. Maybe the skin's kind of pulling in between the ribs or kind of up underneath the ribs as they're using extra muscles to breathe. Okay. A little bit of that is okay. If you're saying, man, they're really doing that a lot. They're breathing fast, 60 breaths a minute or more, mm -hmm. and really kind of pulling for more than a half hour without a fever, it's another reason to reach out to their doctor. 
What about people that have home oxygen monitors for their baby? Yeah, so as long as your baby is healthy without other medical conditions and maybe you have a home outlet or something similar, mm -hmm. um, it would be good to let their doctor know if you're noticing that their oxygen saturation is kind of persistently dropping below that 92% level. Um, for most medical providers, a number of 90% or less is indication to start some sort of respiratory support yeah. um, for a baby who is sick like this. For most viral illnesses, however, your baby won't need help breathing, but there are some things that you can do to help them feel better at home. Yeah, so it's amazing how much like some mucus or a little booger can do to limit the amount of air getting into your baby's lungs. And so if they're having trouble breathing and you notice, gosh, there's a lot of mucus in there, it's a good idea to try to clean that out to help them breathe. Yes, so there are those classic bulb suction mm -hmm. devices you can use for that. Or also the nose Frida can also be even more helpful for helping get those out. Yeah, the bulb suction devices honestly aren't that great. Um, another really good trick is to bring your baby into the bathroom, close the door, turn the shower on hot, hot to make steam, and then while keeping your baby out of the shower, just letting them breathe some of that hot steam to kind of break up some of that mucus. Yeah. Or you can have a vaporizer kind of in their room that you can hold them by. Yeah. So as we mentioned, uh, our little baby girl, Cease, just got sick this past weekend, yeah. kind of her first illness with a fever um, that, as it turns out, was something that I brought home from work despite like washing my hands often and working really hard not to bring illnesses home. I picked up a bug and then passed it to my own baby. Every parent's worst neighbor nightmare is that they get their own baby sick. Poor baby Cease. Yeah. So she was pretty sad and pathetic for a couple of days. Um, and we did, you know, kind of what Kurt said was make sure she was breathing okay and was really well hydrated. It was so funny. He's like, she'd pee and have a wet diaper or something. And he's like, oh, I, I love this. My pediatrician self like loves that she's having all these wet diapers. Um, so kind of just put her to the boob whenever she wanted. Yeah. Um, like our schedules kind of went out the window. He said, hey, yeah. she's fussy. Like, let's let her give her something to drink. And she didn't want to eat her solids much at all, but like she drank a lot, which was fortunate. And fortunately, didn't have any issues with difficulty breathing with this particular illness, despite having lots of nasal congestion and boogers and snot. So um, wasn't a major respiratory issue. Yes. Um, she slept a lot. Um, she napped longer naps than ever than she ever took. Slept long, like fourteen hours one night. Um, so you could tell she was just kind of punk. Yeah. Um, we need to get, I wanted to get one of those temporal thermometer scanners. All we had was this Frida baby one that worked fine. Um, and does give you the more accurate readings of it, allowing you to either do an oral temperature or a rectal temperature. Yeah, um, to put it this way. Neither of us felt really comfortable doing a rectal temperature, which like you'd think like, oh, we're both physicians. Like, of course, like if we had to, we could. But she been so mad. Yeah. Um, so mad. At least that was our, and so like we actually like, dipped the end in sugar and to got get her to oral suck on temps. It. Um, which worked out well for us. The other like, yeah. little hack that's worked out really well for us is this little device from Frida Baby. Um, it's just a pacifier that allows you to put a syringe in the back end to then give the medication into the mouth. This worked really well when she was an infant. She doesn't use a pacifier for us now. Um, now that she's doing more oral feeds, we're actually just syringing the the Tylenol directly into the mouth, mm -hmm. um, but this is just one of those little gadgets that we have that has been really helpful for us. And you could tell she felt really crummy when she was febrile. Mm -hmm. um, she was really fussy, she was really cuddly, she didn't want to play, and then we'd give her some Tylenol and her fever would come down and she'd get a little of her energy back and she'd want to play. So She'd want to drink too with the other big yep. things. So. And so we really felt like keeping treating her fever helped her be a lot more comfortable through the whole thing. To wrap up this episode, we want to talk about some of the red flag signs and symptoms that are reasons for you to call your baby's doctor or take them to the nearest emergency room. Yeah. So if your baby is less than two months of age and they have a fever that's a temperature of greater than 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius, call their pediatrician. If they are not responsive, they are not waking, or they've slept through two feeds in a row. Yeah. 
Um, if they're having difficulty breathing, so this is just trouble getting air in or getting air out, or if they're having that prolonged fast breathing greater than 60 breaths a minute for more than 30 minutes without a fever. Yes. If they have some blueness in their chest or inside of their mouth, or if they have a less than 92% oxygen saturation on a home O2 monitor, call right away. Yeah. Um, if you're, they aren't making wet diapers to the point where they've gone more than eight to 10 hours without a wet diaper, this is also a reason to call. Yeah. Or if you have any other concerns that just something isn't right or something's off with your kiddo, you know them best, call your doctor. So that's going to be it for us this week. Hopefully all this information helps you feel a little bit more reassured yep. when your baby's sick to say, hey, they're sick, we're going to work through this, we're going to keep them hydrated, they're breathing easily, um, but then also knowing, wait, these things have changed, I'm a bit more concerned, these are when I need to call, and that can just help you have that reassurance and taking care of your sick baby at home. Yeah. So stay healthy. We will see you next week. Okay. Bye, guys. We're doctors. But not your doctors. Anything we've said in this video is for education or entertainment purposes only. It is not medical advice. Any specific medical questions you have should be directed to your provider.